Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing some work on the S14 behind me. We finished off all the coolant system in the last couple of videos, the fueling system, intake manifold. So now it's time to move on to the electrical system. When I got the car, there were a whole bunch of issues that we found in the wiring harness. There are tons of wires that just uh, horrible crimps, broken connections. It, it was a mess. So uh, ripped out every single wire from it and we're going to make a brand new harness. Today I'm going to show you how to go about uh, figuring out how you want to route your engine harness. Let's get to it. So obviously, if you're going to get into wiring a car, you're going to need to know a bit about how to wire cars, how the electrical system works. That's not something I'm going to be able to teach you in this video, but there are a ton of resources out there. The internet's great for it. High Performance Academy or HP Academy, they are one of the best ones for teaching you how to do wiring. Uh, so I highly recommend giving them a look. But anyways, if you're going to get into wiring your engine bay, you're going to want to plan it out. And the easiest way is to grab yourself some rope. So nylon rope is going to be your friend here. Um, it's cheap and it kind of gives the same bends as an actual wiring harness would. So I've got here a half inch thick nylon rope and I'm going to use that to kind of represent the main trunk of my engine harness. Um, and then I've also got quarter inch uh, rope and this is going to be kind of for the little branches off of it. Uh, another thing you're going to want is wire clamps, hose clamps, whatever you call them, but uh, get yourself different types and, um, and you're going to use those to kind of mock up where the harness is going to run. And then a ton of zip ties. These things are disposable you are going to use a ton of them so buy yourself like a thousand pack if you're going to be doing a whole bunch of wiring so if you're going to plan out your engine wiring harness there's a couple things you need to do in advance um, one is have a rough idea of what systems you need to wire in you need to know where the wires need to go and the second one that goes with that is obviously knowing where those systems are going to sit get your sensors installed figure out the placement of all of them before you start making the wiring harness and on that note also make sure that there's no other systems you're going to be adding in say extra hoses or oil catch cans or anything that are going to interfere with the wiring harness. When I plan out a wiring harness for a vehicle, I like to make sure it's tidy and kind of kept away from those systems. You just kind of want to make sure that you're also future-proofing your wiring harness. Now, there are times when you may not have all of the components installed in the vehicle just yet. Maybe you're waiting for them. That's okay. You can still plan out, you know, where it's going to sit and then just make sure when you're planning your harness out, you leave a little bit extra length just in case there's any issues and you can always cut back that one branch. That, that's a lot easier than trying to fix the main trunk of the engine harness. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm going to dive into this engine bay, show you what I've done, give you kind of a rough idea of how you can wire up your own SR20 engine. So one of the important things to do when you're planning out the engine harness is know where the ECU is going to be mounted and also where you're going to go through here. Let me get a light down in here. Where you're going to go through on the bulkhead or the firewall. So I've got a couple different spots that I've already planned out. I've made sure, for me, there's no interference over here because while well, my dash is pretty much gutted, there's no HVAC. Um, but for other people, there might be HVAC that you need to work around. So you need to figure out, you know, which hole do you want to go through to get that wiring harness through there? It's also going to depend on what size connector you're using to go through, but um, all of that, you know, is uh, is stuff you can look up online. You'll figure out the dimensions of the connector, and uh, and then you can plan out which hole it's going to go through. So for me, I got my Link ECU, which is probably going to be mounted just kind of on the on the tunnel right there. Um, up here, I'm going to have toggle switches that are going to control everything and then kind of tucked behind on the, on probably on the bulkhead there, is going to be the fuses and relays. Um, I'm not going to go with the PDM, I, it's just out of my budget at the moment, and that's okay. I can do the exact same stuff with fuses and relays. Um, over here, I've got a steering wheel. This was actually from my Evo, um, but you know what? I'm going to use it for this vehicle because the Evo's not seeing the roads at the moment since the engine's fried. Um, so, it's, you know, it's all wired up and ready to go. It's got connectors, controls the the headlights, the wipers. It has stuff for the ECU, the start buttons on there turn signal so everything's wired into it so I know that you know I'm going to have to plan for where this connector matches up there's going to be a digital dash over here as well so that's one of the things that we're going to need to plan for um, and then beyond that you've got your main power cable this is how it was when I bought the car I'm not sure if this is the routing I'm going to use but play around with it and I'll figure out where I want it to go to send power over to the starter the alternator and essentially all the fuses and relays that are going to power this car 
Another thing to note for this vehicle, I've kind of alluded to it, there's going to be an e-throttle system. So you can see down under here, there is a throttle pedal that is out of a Nissan, I believe 350 or 370, I can't remember, a VQ35. Um, it's got a six pin connector there, so that's going to be wired into the Link ECU. And uh, so yeah, let's go over to the engine bay, you'll see where the throttle body is for it, and, uh, and all the routing. Okay, we're in the engine bay here. Um, there's that beautiful throttle body I was talking about. That's another six pin connector on it, a Bosch throttle body. Um, I will do up another video where I actually dive into the wiring of this connector, the wiring of the pedal. But for now, we need to actually get all the wires to their destination. So down in here, I've got a whole bunch of ropes that are all branched right off of this firewall connector, bulkhead connector. Now, when I was mocking it up, I used this here. This is a Delphi H, uh, HDP, I believe. I can't remember exactly. Anyways, um, it matches the size of the connector I'm actually going to use, which is uh, most likely an Amphenol. So I've figured out that this is where it's going to go through. Right behind the tape, there's, a, there's another hole there. And, uh, and what I've got is all of the rope here is going to represent the wiring harness that's coming out. Where the zip tie is, is everything that branches off. So, you know, down here, I've got one. This is going to go to a sub connector that goes underneath and it's going to go where the transmission is. So on the transmission, there's a variable or a vehicle speed sensor, a reverse switch, and then as well, the down pipes right beside it. So I'm going to be putting this Bosch sensor onto the down pipe. That's going to be for our air fuel ratio. So I need to plan for all that. So like I said, I'm going to have a sub harness. So a connector right there to a sub harness. Uh, the next one that branches off is coming right up into here. And this is for the ignition coil packs. It's so got four coil packs there. Each has three wires. Um, right down behind here, there's actually a branch point. That's going to be where all of the wires split the 12 volt and the grounds. They're going to split off from there and go to each one as well as the four signals that go to the ECU. So that's that harness there. Okay. Next one we have this here is actually going to the knock sensor. Now it's, it's hard for me to show it here, but the knock sensor is actually under the intake manifold. And typically what happens on the stock engine, you have this connector that goes right on to the knock sensor. And then there is another one. And so this, this kind of sits under the intake manifold and makes it more accessible. Now, since I switched over to the MP boosted manifold though, it's actually easy for me to just reach under there. It's hard for you to see, but it's easy for me to see from over here. I can reach under and I can actually get right to that connector. So this here is going to run right to it. And then I'm going to put a brand new connector on that matches that um, for the knock sensor. Okay. So that is, let's see, that's everything off of that branch except for, um, the main branch, obviously here. So this main branch comes up. Now, when you're routing your engine harness, you want it to be away from heat sources. You want to make sure it's tidy. You also want to make sure there's enough flex in it so that when this engine moves, you know, if it's not solid mounted, this engine's going to move while you're driving. You want to make sure that this here has enough play in it to account for that. So that's one of the things we've done. Got some clamps here just so we can route it, figure out where it's going to go. So it's going to kind of ride right along um, where the fuel rail is tucked right behind it. Now, one of the things we have is there's four fuel injectors, obviously under there. And for three of them, let's see if I can get a better look. Uh, you can kind of see right down here where it's clocked to the side. I was able to do that for three of them so that when, when the wires branch off comes right into it like that, um, here's this one branches and goes right into it there, there, but number one, I don't have enough space because of this on the engine. So what I've actually had to do kind of guide it through there and then clock that one hard to see, but it's clocked underneath the fuel rail. You know, uh, I'd, I'd like to have them all lined up, but in this case, I'm not going to push it. It works. This branch point here, like I said, that goes to one of the injectors. The other one here is going to go to your variable timing cam solenoid or VCT solenoid, I believe. So that's a two pin there. And then the other one is going to branch off and it's going to kind of clamp onto there and it's going to go to our Bosch e-throttle. So that's the throttle body there, six pins on that. And then this one, like I said, if you don't have everything in place, that's okay. You need to know where they're going though. So this is the IAT sensor, the temperature for the air. Now I know that it's going to sit right about here because that's where the charge pipe's going to be. So I just gave this a little extra length 
And then when I have the pipe installed and I have the sensor on it, I can trim it back a little bit if needed, or you know what? It's probably going to be perfect as it is. Now the main branch, it's going to continue along here. And once again, I found some nice spots to clamp it. Uh, not too much tension. I've left a little bit of slack, which is important. And then you get to the final two sensors. So for me, I've got my cam sensor here and that's, that's on pretty much every SR engine. So that's there. I've got a ground point and I'm not sure if I'm going to use this yet. I'm still doing a bit of research into it, but um, the cam sensor needs to be ground to the chassis or the engine, uh, not to the ECU. So, you know, I'll likely ground that either here or go back through the connector and ground it somewhere on the chassis in there. And then the last one here, uh, if you watched any of my previous videos, you know that I switched up the coolant system completely. So my coolant sensor temperature is over here now. So that's your ECT sensor. And uh, so yeah, that is the main harness that runs the engine. So I know there's a lot of instances where people say, race car, doesn't need headlights, doesn't need turn signals, none of that crap. Well, you know what? It's easier to just have them on the car for when you need them. There are some times when the track will say you need your headlights on. Um, or maybe, you know, you want to take your car out for an occasional drive on the streets if by some miracle it's actually roadworthy. I, I don't think mine will ever be. But for a lot of you, if you go and delete those systems, it's just, it's no fun anymore. And it sometimes limits you. So keep them in. So in my case, we're going to go back into the engine bay and I'm going to show you where I'm going to route that harness that runs the headlights, the turn signals, uh, your horns, and uh, what else, the cooling fans. Well, you know, usually that would be on the engine harness, but in my case, it's going to be easier to route it along, um, along the frame here. So let's jump back into it. Okay, so we're back in the engine bay here looking at one of the other holes that's going through the bulkhead. And this is where I'm going to have what I call kind of my accessories harness. Um, it's going to run all those systems that I just brought up there. So it's going to come down, make a nice little bend. You can see it's clamped down there. And the main trunk is going to run all the way along the frame. And that's a nice clean way to do it. Um, there's some holes here. So what I'm eventually going to do is put in some um, rivet nuts and then use that to put a clamp on just to hold the harness there in place. So it's a nice clean way to do it. So the first branch is over here. Now I've actually forgotten one, I just realized. Um, there's going to be a wire that comes right off of here and goes right up into the wipers. Cause you know what? You still want your wipers, the race car or not, you want those wipers working. Um, down here, the next one, this is actually a ground and this is going to ground right to the block. And the reason I want that is because I'm running a lot of power through the fans, horns, headlights, all that. I want to just ground it right here instead of take it back into the cabin. Now, further down, there's one big branch and the first thing coming off right here goes to the starter. That's the signal to the starter to, well, you know, start your car. The second one here is the alternator. So on that there, there's two wires and the first one's gonna be for your alternator um, sense wire. It tells it what the voltage is. And the second one goes to your warning light just in case there's any problems with the alternator. And then the last thing I've got I call this, it's a spare fuel connector. Now at the moment, my fuel sensor, or my, sorry, um, my regulator has a sensor on it, or a gauge, but in the future, I might wanna actually wire this into the ECU. So I'm gonna plan ahead in case I ever decide to switch out this sensor for a new one. Okay, let's move along. We get to the next branch here, this one. Same thing, I don't have it in place yet, but there's going to be an oil pressure sensor on here once I fix all of this body damage and welding damage. Um, but there will be an oil pressure sensor on there, so I've left this long on purpose because I don't know where this is going to actually end up. For the headlights, I'm going to wire, I'm going to take off this connector, I don't like this style, and I'm also going to wire the turn signal into here. So there'll be one connector and it's going to connect right up to this here. So that'll be connected. Uh, and then this is going to go to a sub harness that's actually going to power the horns. So I'm going to wire the horns right underneath here. Um, but I want the connector over here so it's easy to get to because once everything else is here, uh, it's going to be a bit of a pain to get the harness into it. Okay, follow the main trunk. It's going to go right along here because I quite like that. Oh, speaking of which, cooling fans. Let's go back a step. Here we have the fans. So the wire's coming off of them. This is the Mishimoto fans. Um, obviously I'm going to get rid of these crappy connectors and go to a Deutsch connector, um, but that's where it's going to connect up. So that all branches off from there. <laughs> Last thing, main trunk travels right over here and it connects up to the other headlight. 
and turn signal will get wired in there too. That's it. So one of the other things I didn't mention in there is the boost solenoid. So this is a Mac boost solenoid and um, this is actually going to be mounted inside the vehicle. So I'm going to mount it on the firewall in there. And what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to use bulkhead fittings to pass through um, the vacuum hose. It's going to run to it. So one goes to the actuator on the turbo there and then the other one's going to go to the intake manifold. Um, another sensor that isn't in the engine bay that I'm going to have inside the car is going to be the MAP sensor or the boost pressure sensor. Um, that one's critical for the Link ECU. But I like to have that one inside the car. The vacuum hose will have enough flexibility to it obviously that, um, that it's easier for me to kind of diagnose if there's any issues if I can get to that sensor a bit better. So. That's just my preference, I like to do it that way. Um, another thing I do when I'm mocking this up, like I said, the nylon rope is great for figuring out the bends, but I, like to, I, I do concentric twists for my harness. So what I actually do is I have a little test piece here and I use it to just kind of confirm that the bend here is going to match what I'm, what I'm doing on the engine there. Now, it's not a big deal. If you, obviously, most people don't have a little test piece lying around, but I use this. It's got a, a few different sizes on it and that's how I test. Um, test my bend radius. So the next step now is to take all of the rope out of there, keep it all connected, take it out, and I'm going to measure that up. And that's what I'm going to use to build the harness. Ideally, I don't want to have to keep coming out to the car and testing the harness out. I should be able to take what I designed with the rope there and build the complete harness and it would plug in and go right away. Now, you know, in an ideal world, of course, that's how it would work. I'm going to do some test fits on it throughout the process, um, but not too many because this is going to be pretty accurate with the rope. Once you have everything planned out, it makes building the harness so much easier. Take the time now, do it properly. That way you're not having to rip wires out. Trust me, I've learned from experience and a lot of mistakes. It is so much easier to just do it right from the start. So yeah, this, uh, this video is a little different from the other ones. You know, we've gone from the mechanical systems and the cooling systems down to the electrical system. So I know some of you might have already clued out well in advance. Um, I get it, you know, electrical, it's boring for some people. I love doing the wiring though. That, that's my favorite part of the car. I get to plan everything out. It's just, it's a fun experience. If you have questions, post them in the comments. If you want to see more of the wiring videos, because that's what's going to be going on for the next little bit, please give me a like or a follow. You'll get to see much more as I build this harness and get the Link ECU running.